Bye. Bye. Amen. Bye. We want to thank the Soto family for continuing to provide us with music, which is very important in worship, you know, so that we don't miss the congregation too much. We have music coming on. Even though we, even though, was, was there a slight delay? We were seeing a slight delay? Yeah. Okay, there was a slight delay. That's usually an internet, internet problem. Okay, we want to thank Joyce again for joining us for all the way from New York. I guess more people will join us, but that's not the point. We're going to continue our discussion from scripture by showing some of the laws and see if they are still binding that we, some people say are nailed to the cross. And we are showing that they are not nailed to the cross, that they are still relevant. But before we get into this week's topic, we'll be looking at the laws pertaining to the poor, the widow, and the stranger. But before we do that, is there any, anybody have any follow-up question from last week's um, discussion about last week's discussion, the laws and, and relationships, male and female? If not, we will continue. So this week, we're going to take a few verses all over the place. Um, and so we're going to start with Leviticus 19. So let me get something on the screen now. Uh, Leviticus 19. All right, let's close that. All right, we're just going to look at a few verses at Leviticus 19. And see how we can unpack it. We're looking at how we should treat the poor, the widow, and the stranger. All right. So Leviticus 19, most of Yah's laws always start off with the Lord spoke to Moshe saying. So what we are saying there is that it is not Moses' law. Moses um, was given the Lord by God himself. And the Lord tell him to speak these things. So he did not sit down and think of stuff to write up, to put a burden on the people. If there is a burden, then it is God's burden. He is the one who gave it to them. His burden. And he says his burden is light. Yeshua said that my burden is light. Take on my burden. And his burden is his laws. So he says, 19 verse 1 and 2, Speak to Moshe saying, Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel and tell them, You shall be holy, for I am the Lord your God, I'm holy. So the Lord is giving us these laws because he wants us to be holy like him. So there's nothing can be burdensome about it. If he says these laws are to make us holy like as close to him as possible. Therefore they cannot be burdensome. So, we, so the category we're going to be looking at is starting from verse 9 and 10. 9, 10 and 18 we're going to be looking at. There are some there but they are in different categories so we're not going to touch those. So 9 and 10 All right, so can someone read 9 and 10? When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field, neither shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not glean your vineyard, neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of, of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the foreigner. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Right, so that's one law right there, Riches, which <clears throat> is still relevant today. It was not done away with. How is it relevant? We can do it in, we have done it in many different forms. Okay, so many of us here are from the Caribbean, and we know in the Caribbean we see our grandparents do certain things, and then we continue to do it. And there are some things that we do, let's not deal with the field first, deal with the home. When we are cooking, what does our grandparents do? Cook extra food and leave for the stranger. Exactly. We always cook extra food because we say we don't know. Somebody can walk in. Our relatives can be coming from somewhere, stopping by, and somebody can be walking in and they need some food. Are we going to have some extras to give them? So anybody walking, a stranger, they always have extra plate to share and to give. If it's even to um, lessen hours a little bit to give them, that's what they always do. So that's, that's the principle. That principle is coming from here. Also, and also, um, since 
Well, Joyce is in New York, so she might not see this much, but here in Florida, there are a lot of orange groves. But I don't think that they, 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 we can walk on the orange grove and pick up the oranges on the ground. It might still be a problem. But let's look at the law of Florida. Let's look. I have a thing here. I was thinking about that. I said, let me check and see. Let's look. The law of Florida. They still have something that is still relevant. The laws of Florida against picking oranges in Florida. See, laws against picking oranges in Florida. Oranges growing. We have, okay, so it says farm theft. Okay, so section 812, that's what they would cite if they're gonna give you a violation. 812015, entitled, let me make it bigger a little bit. Theft rampage. So, Right. So it says theft, robbery, and related crimes. Details explicitly with form theft. In part G of this section, the Florida statutes define form theft as a unlawful taking possession of any items that are grown or produced on land owned, rented, or leased by another person. So that means that includes the government. These items, per the, these items per the definition in this section and section 601-041 include oranges, making it illegal to pick them without farmer's permission or without paying the farmer. All right, so we can pick them, but we have to get permission. So they have that permission there too. So you can pick the, the, um, the fruit, but you get permission from the farmer if you see him moving around in his tractor in there. He said, hey, can I pick some oranges? And he say, yeah, okay, go ahead. And you are, I know, so, so this provision in the law where it says without asking them is also fulfilling that scripture that we looked at. Any, any comments on that, on that law? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Okay, right. They say with, if you can ask with permission, you can pick it. <laughs> But it, um, there's another statute that um, that mentions if the tree is hanging over in the public, like on the walkway, you walk it by and the tree is hanging over, even from a private yard, you can pick it. Because it's hanging over in the public road. Right, so that also gives leeway. And, and the same principle applies because remember this story of... Um, uh, Ruth, remember, she did ask the owner of the property permission to glean. R remember the story in Ruth? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, she did ask permission and, and he said, who is that lady? And she was able to glean some fruit from the, from the tree. So it is still in line. And we still do that in the countryside most times. Um, they would pick the fruit and they would put it out in their yard. In most country places, if you drive by, you see they put up fruits on the yard and say, free, take one. Take, take it if you want. Fruits put out on the street side back right there and they say, right, right where the um, mailbox is, they would say, take if you want. So they are still following that principle. It's embedded, even if you don't know the laws from the scriptures, it's embedded in their hearts to do such stuff for the, the poor and so forth. And we're gonna look into some New Testament scriptures later on where these things are still relevant. You don't find these things specifically spelled out like this in the New Testament, but the principle is there. Okay, so we look at another one further in, um, not 19, it's gonna be Leviticus 25, let's see. All right. And then we talk about it. Leviticus 25 talks about Jubilee. We're not going to go into Jubilee because that's a different category. So Leviticus 25, 14. Uh, okay, this is very important now. So it says, if you sell anything to your neighbor or buy off your neighbor's hand, you shall not wrong one another. 
What does that mean? Thirty-five to thirty-seven. Yeah. Rob. And then we're gonna look at thirty-five to thirty-seven. That means that don't get caught. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> 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 it just weights and balances. Do do uh, do what's right. Be honest. Do what's right, right. <laughs> yes, do not defraud. Yes, right. So be we honest. go down. And, and also to also to be honest. And if you find in a transaction that uh, maybe maybe on your end or on your side that you needed to do more for it to be right then you do that because that also becomes a witness. Yes, yes, that's true. Yeah, that, I remember, that, I remember mm. um, in, in, in Jamaica, um, most people remember, mostly in the, in the countryside, um, when you go to the market, when the country folks brings food to the town and we buy food, the, 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 the sellers appreciate you coming. So you buy, so let's say you buy a dozen banana they may give you half a dozen extra because they appreciate they appreciate you and they want you to come back. So they say, okay, you buy a dozen. All right, let me give you half a dozen extra. I say you get half a dozen extra for the same for the same price. And so they do that sometimes. No uh, man, not half a dozen. You may get you may get that like three extra. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going too much. They give you extra yes. give you three extra. Okay. Just keeping it real. Just keeping it real. <laughs> Boy, that reminds me of an expression that bakers doesn't. It was right. custom that you go to a bakery and if you bought a dozen, they give you an extra one. That other baker yeah. does it, 13 pieces. And not twelve, and that's where that expression comes. But you know, this verse also reminds me uh, uh, my uncle. Um, since I have five, and they all have disease, I'm not giving you their names. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay but my uncle had a house in Puerto Rico, and he went ahead and decided that he wants to sell it, and he goes ahead and spends about five thousand dollars in fixing it and making it look very nice. Now I have a friend in Saint Thomas who was a guy that um, was, um, had uh, killed someone in New York and jumped the bail and fleed. And this was 25 years earlier. And he was a landscaper in St. Thomas. I knew his situation. Um, it was his previous life. He was a good Christian. He had repented, but um, just would not go and turn himself in because he felt that the, the, the killing was all, uh, it wasn't his fault, but he did kill the guy. But anyway, be that as man. Now my uncle knows about him and his situation and tells him, listen, I have this beautiful house to sell in Puerto Rico. I'll sell it to you on the terms. Just get me $10,000 and the house is yours. And you can move your family to a beautiful house. So he, he, my uncle paid for the airfare air air ticket in those days, about $90, to actually go and take him there so he could see the house. And he got very excited. And he decided, he was a landscaper, he had just signed a big contract and he took the entire $10,000 he made in that contract and gave it to my uncle. Little something is that when he goes there and moves his family, comes to find out the house had some problems, but more importantly, the house was only worth $45,000. My uncle sold it to him for 75. Mm -hmm. And so my uncle, why, why would you do that to, to uh, to him because you know we, we in my uncle's reaction said I'm entitled to a profit nobody can tell me what my profit can be I made a, an offer and he could take it or leave it nobody put a gun to his face yeah that's a, that's a so, capital capitalist society that <laughs> yeah so so when I told him but uh you you know his condition you know you know what I'm talking about he said well that's exactly he can't talk because he barely that's can't what I was thinking talk. too yeah Oh. He knew the guy so, would want so, to make. Yes. So I, I, again, and and, he, and and of course, he was the one that taught me the Bible. Mm -hmm. I right there. <laughs> I, okay. So he was not living it at all. <laughs> all right. And to continue with what you said, this is in the same vein. Leviticus 25, 35. We can do 35 to 39. Can someone read that? Leviticus 25, 35 to 39 on the screen, hopefully. If your brother has grown poor and his hand failed 
with you. Then you shall uphold him as a stranger and a foreigner shall he live with you. Which means don't take advantage of a good man when he's down. Right, mm -hmm. yes. Yep. Continue to 39. Take no interest of him or increase, but fear you, Yah, that your brother may live with you. You shall not give him your money on interest, nor give him your victuals for increase. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you forth out of the land of Mitzrayim to give you the land of Canaan and to be your Adonai. If your brother has grown poor with you and sell himself to you, you shall not make him to serve as a bond servant. Right. That means he shall get pay whenever he works. And um, the, 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 the uncle, was it the uncle in Puerto Rico, the property yes. owner? Yes. The property owner could have still made a profit on the transaction without taking advantage of the situation. Uh, I guess worse, my sister. My uncle is one of three uncles I have on my father's side who are all self-made millionaires. He was worth millions of dollars. This house, he could have burned it to the ground, he won't miss it. Right. Mm. And it goes it, it goes to it goes to say um, when you look at the, the heart you know, the heart and the motive of, of each individual. And uh, that's what the father, that's what the father looks at and judges. Mm -hmm. All right. So in that same vein, we continue in Deuteronomy chapter 10, from verse 19, Deuteronomy mm -hmm. 10, 19. Oh, no, 18, 18, 18 and 19. Deuteronomy 10, 18, 19. He said he does execute justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the stranger in giving him food and clothing. Therefore, love the stranger for you were foreigners in the land of Mitzrayim. Why, does it, why is it that he always goes back to Mitzrayim or Egypt? That's of the treatment they gave them in is in Egypt, they should not go back and do the same thing. And do the same, because remember you were, you didn't like how you were treated in Egypt, so do not give it to anybody else. Treat them better than you were in Egypt. And that's coming from, and that's where Leviticus, I forgot to mention this one, Leviticus 19 now, when he was finishing, um, That statement, he says in verse um, 18, Scary. that's where it comes in. That's, this is the classical, uh, so-called New Testament verse. <laughs> As people say, oh, Yeshua is doing something different. You shall not take vengeance, nor be in a grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So if you see your neighbor as yourself, then you treat them good, no matter who. And the neighbor is not somebody who just live um, near you, you know? It's all those people who are running away from asylum in our modern age, trying to seek asylum, running away from certain stuff. That's why in the United States, they have that law. If you run away from asylum, you can apply for asylum. And they have various different laws where people can apply um, I think they, they have a, um, a wet foot, dry foot for the Cubans. Um, and they have something for Haiti. I don't know what that one is called. Um, TPS, something like that. But the wet foot, dry foot for, for Cubans, if, if your foot land on the shores of the United States, you can stay. And something for the Haitians as Haiti. There's another law for those folks also. So they have the principle is there, and most countries do follow it, and some, some don't, but the principle is there for us to follow. Any, any questions so far? You know, Maury, uh, on this particular verse, I'm reminded in, in the first century time, there was a situation. Um, some 
rabbi at some point in time, so look at this, the latter part say, you shall love your neighbors yourself. Uh -huh. And one of, the prevalent, one of the prevalent ideas was that the negative of a command is also true. Yes. And so they will, they will say, uh, if, if you're supposed to love your neighbor, then you should hate your own neighbor. Your own neighbor. Okay. Yeah, your own neighbor. And in other words, the idea was, who is your neighbor? Not everybody is your neighbor. If someone is your neighbor, you have to love them. But if they are not your neighbor, your own neighbor, you're supposed to hate. And, so that's, and, and this that's, is why, that's why Yeshua gave that parable. Yeah, when he said, you have heard it said, not yes. if it's written, it already said, love your neighbor, but hurt, I hate your enemies. It, it came from the same verse here, by applying what they call the negative of it. The negative of it will be as true as the positive, and that's what the rabbis claim. And of course, that was a distortion of the whole intention. And Messiah yes. rightly pointed it out. Yes. I want to go to something here to show. Um, um, or did I stop? So, question. So, how would we, and I'm just throwing this out there um, to Chuan. How would we ascertain who, quote unquote, qualifies as the neighbor? And I just want to get some feedback because then I have, I have my thoughts on it. Oh, the, the, whole human, the whole human race would be your neighbor. <laughs> and especially <laughs> those who are in need, wherever they are, uh, would be your neighbor based on Yeshua's um, story of the Good Samaritan. <clears throat> exactly. And ba basically my, um, my thought was the people that would be outside of your family, Yes. anyone outside of your family, would be considered your neighbor. So right. you have your family, you have your immediate family, your extended family, and then you have your neighbor, which basically <laughs> that encompasses everybody. Right. Can I, can I? Yes. This, this thought is coming to me. When you, in these times, they were addressing the Israelites. Yes. So could So could it be that he was talking to the Israelites as a group. So any Israelite, you you consider that person to be your neighbor. But anybody outside of the 12 tribes would be a goyim, a stranger, a, stranger, a foreigner. Right, a stranger. Uh -huh. That is not, uh -huh. that has not um, aligned themselves to Israel. So he he is a he is talking here to Israel and whoever has aligned themselves to Israel. This is a message for Israel, not for the nations. That's very true. You could be right because you said when you go in there, do not do what the others do. Mm -hmm. You know. So when he talks about um, loving your neighbor, is he talking about the Israelites? But we have now broadened that to everybody. In that keeping in mind, the whole purpose for him selecting Israel was for what? To be a light to the nations, to show them and to introduce them to Elohim, to introduce them to him. Right. So it was supposed to go from them to others. It's another consideration. Exactly. Yes. Well, let's remember the parable that Messiah gave of the, of the Good Samaritan. Right. Okay. Um, the idea was that um, the priest and the Levite passed by and left the injured man there. A Samaritan who has no connection in any which way or form, this is a perfect stranger to another stranger, is the one that took pity and acted mercifully to save the guy's life and even bear the expenses of his recovery. Um, I think that is that, that was in keeping in line with how Messiah saw his Torah that he had given to Israel. I agree that the main focus is Israel, but by extension, it always extends to the rest of mankind, especially when it comes to doing good, to doing righteous. Now, it, that doesn't mean that we are gonna be uh, victimized willingly and offer ourselves to become victims and abuse. Obviously, that's not the case. But uh, in, in the absence of malice against us, 
we should always show compassion and mercy, not only to our fellow Israelites, but to Goims as well. Right. That's why it says the stranger, whether he's aligned or not. Now, um, and to continue, you remember, you remember Yeshua says to his disciples, I want you to love as I have loved you. Um, I remember we were talking sometime, maybe it could be a, a two weeks now, and, and um, Jacinta suggested something. So, so I'm going to show you proof. I went in and I changed it. All right. <laughs> so, so there it is. It says, we are not close-minded. <laughs> Where is that? It, it's not, it was narrow-minded before. Huh? Oh, it's a very close-minded. Oh. <laughs> initially, it was narrow-minded, so I changed it to close-minded. But and so when when we mention that now, I I have some basic um, beliefs that most people want to see, but I want to go down to something what we're talking about. So I said to myself while I was doing this, I said, I need to put something in that's um, unusual, but scriptural. Also in line with what we're saying, I went, the last one came to mind and said, let me put this one in. Yeshua said we should love our neighbors ourselves, but I put it in then. We should, we also believe that we should love our neighbors better than ourselves. Isn't that adding to scripture? No, yes. I'm not adding. I'm not adding to scriptures. Love you know, our neighbors better than ourselves. Yes. Say All right. So, so you see, this is a this is a um. What do you call it now? A, a deeper understanding of going into the scriptures once you fully understand what's going on. So therefore, as you see, wait, 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 wait. Are you going the road that says um a a, a man should give up his life? For? Blesses the man who gives his life for his brother, or something like that. Well, I wasn't even going, going there. I wasn't even going there, but we have we have scriptures. If you notice, everything I have there, I have scriptures to back it up. Yeah, you, you know, I'm a hundred and ten percent, well, maybe a hundred and nine percent with Mori on this one. Oh yes. <laughs> because it's surprise, so, surprise. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> it speaks about. Be having a heart that is given. And many times you have to sacrifice. When you give from your affluence, that's not a sacrifice. That's just exactly. sharing. Yes. Exactly. You have. You, when you give something that you yourself could have used and need and you give it to someone else, you are sacrificing. Right. And yeah. that is showing a greater love for the other person than you show yourself. And that's yeah. a biblical principle. Solid Torah, that's 100%. All right, all right, all right. All right. So, in so we have sense, it. So, yes. so we have it in yeah. Leviticus nineteen eighteen. Okay. So somebody, can somebody find the last two? First Corinthians ten twenty four, and Philippians two three. And can you, if you want me to put it up on the screen, I can. First Corinthians ten twenty four. Let me, let me, let me do that first. Mm -hmm. Here, that one of the greatest. Rabbi that we know of speaking. Verse 24. And then Philippians 2, 3. See what it says there? All right, so it says, Let no one seek his own, but each one is neighbor's. Good. Yes. All right. Philippians I wonder if, I, I wonder if I, it needs an I. An I. That's it. P-H-I. So if we didn't know this, then we have to write it down. Philippians 2, 23. 23 or 3. Huh? It's 3? All right. Okay. So you saw it. You saw it. All right. Philippians 2, 3 said, doing nothing through rivalry or true conceit, but in humility, each counting others better than himself. And uh, in, in our culture today, uh -huh. uh, that's quote unquote, what can be considered a hard pill to swallow. Oh, yes. In, in our me time and you deserve that word sacrifice that you use, Soto. Oh, that doesn't exist anymore. 
<laughs> sacrifice? What's that? Yeah, what's that? <laughs> now, re remember, they say in the absence of malice. Right. right. Okay, because you know, when you know that somebody's approaching you with some star story, but they're out to get you or to gain an advantage, or they're outright lying to you, they're just manipulating you. That's a different story. The intention of that person is not to seek genuine help for themselves through you. They have an agenda. And that's a different story. But in the absence of malice, yes, this, this, is, this should be our message, our practice. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's how we reflect Messiah's love in us. Yeah. I mean, after really? all, he was a great example. He loved us more than he loved himself. Uh, you know, if, it was, if he was thinking like we do, he would have never offered okay. to go through the kind of debt he went uh, why why do that he could pay money that's cheaper yeah <laughs> yeah yes 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 a few thousand a, a, a few hundred a few hundred bulls <laughs> yeah. yeah here's so, another reference here's another reference romans 12 verse 10. Romans uh, 12, 10. yeah our... in brother in brotherly love tenderly loving toward one another in appreciation, giving preference to each other. Oh yeah, giving preference. All right, 12 verse 10, giving preference. Oh, in hollering, preferring one another, right. Okay, yeah, that's another one, yeah. Preferring the other. Okay, and, you got and, me. Yeah, you're and, right. And, 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 and this relates, um, this relates wait, to- Wait, 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 are you recording this? <laughs> okay, that, one, that one was a deep one, Paul. That one was a <laughs> That was a deep one. Okay. Yes. This okay. one it, it also refers to I have I have a marriage um seminar presentation, right? And we and we do the husband and wife. See, I see um Karen and um Gary yeah. sitting down there. Um, they, it says when you, I learned this at the marriage seminar too, when they, when they want us to learn to teach, make the presentation, um, you, you, when you look in the mirror, you should see your, your spouse, that your, your pulse. <laughs> All right, Iris, you've come off camera. <laughs> you over there giggling. <laughs> yeah, this is this is deep. Yeah. When you look in the mirror, you should see your spouse, you know? <laughs> Both of you are alive. <laughs> <laughs> so so if you look in the mirror, you see your spouse, it will be less likely that you will have an argument, a fight, you know? <laughs> But both has to see it the same way. You understand know what I'm saying? If one is only seeing it, then you're gonna have some problems. There have to be a balance. So, so Gary look in the mirror, he sees Karen. Karen look in the mirror, he sees Gary. But Gary is in the bedroom sleeping. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why. So she. So she. That's why she's willing to take care of him. Whatever happens to him, whatever happens to her, he's there. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I work with a rabbi. <laughs> Uh, you know, but, but I, we love and, and, if I, and if I don't come home, <laughs> and if I don't come home in time, I will get a call and say, "What happened? Where are you? You don't come home yet." You know? <laughs> Concern. <laughs> One time, it used to full up yourself. Yeah, the concern is there because you are one. You know. But you've got to make sure you have your cell phone first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Yes. So Karen, cell phone, I, Karen, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> I am with you on that one. <laughs> it's got to be charged and on. <laughs> the right, other so day, sorry, the other day we went out and I went into the store and Paul was waiting for me in the parking lot. Something happened in the store and I was a little delayed. So I'm calling him, trying to tell him that what is happening. I call and the phone rings. And then it goes to voicemail. I'm saying to myself, who is this man talking to that he's not answering my call? I leave, I leave it alone. I called about four times, not in succession, but as time went on. And in my head, I am cursing out somebody. Why isn't he picking up the phone? 
<laughs> when I go outside, he's in the car. I said, why are you answering your phone? He left the phone at home. Um, he left the phone at home. <laughs> and I parked, and I parked in a way so you could see me. I know, I realized. <laughs> So before we leave the house, I can we be always run through our checklist. Do you yes. have your phone? Is it charged? No, it's not charged. Do you have your cord? Do you have your plug-in? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I have a better one. I leave the house and my wife takes my phone and says, give it to the child. Oh, I say, no. okay, I do. 10 minutes later, she, remem she remembers something important. She starts calling and calling and calling. And I'm like answering the phone. And she gets all upset and angry. And then when I arrive home, they say, why won't you answer your phone? I said, I didn't have it with you. Why didn't you take it with you? You told me to leave it with a girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's still your fault. <laughs> right, so. You should have two phones then. You should have two phones. Then brother Soto, two phones. <laughs> right, so that's what happens when we become one and we see each other as one and we pray for each other over the other. Those <laughs> things happen. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna cut. That's when we remember to love them, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, next, next, time, next time I am inclined to get upset, I'm gonna go look in the mirror. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna go look in the mirror. <laughs> Yes. You might want to yell at the mirror. Just <laughs> look at the husband's face and not Michael Jackson, okay? Yes. <laughs> I, I think also, too, um, in all of this, in all of this, there's a little, just a little tiny bit of humility. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> the end of it all. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think I may do that presentation in, in a one day. We see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we continue in Deuteronomy 24 on, on the same line of, of treating the poor and the widow and the stranger um, as the laws of the Torah and not done away. So 24, 15, I'm going to skip. You know what? No, let me not skip it. It's 24. Yeah, 24, 15, yes. All right, this is another one here. I mean, we did discuss it before. And uh, it said, in his day, you shall give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down on it for his poor and set his heart on it. Lest he cry against you and it be a sin. Let me see verse. Okay, let's do from verse. Yeah, verse 14. Okay, can someone read 14 and 15? This is talking about paying the person when they work for you. At the time you said you're gonna pay the person because his heart is set on the on the um <clears throat> I remember working, you know, sometimes you work and you know, okay, I'm working, I'm gonna get this at the end of the week or at the end of the month. And then at the end of the week or the month, the the check is delayed. As I have my rent to pay, I can't go tell the, the landlord, um, I'm waiting on the check. Check didn't come. So the landlord is also waiting on that money to do their business. Yeah. You know, and then they delay you. <laughs> so it's, it's a domino effect. So um, 14 and 15 is talking about that. You shall not oppress the hired servant who is poor and needy, whether he be of your brothers. Sandra, here's what, here's what you're talking about here now. Whether he be of your brothers or of your foreigners who are in your land within your gates. Okay. In his day, that means when his time comes to get paid. Let me see um, just quickly another version here. All right, so it's KJV. Actually, I said the same thing. He said, at his day, you shall give him his hire, right? and neither shall, the, neither shall the sun go down upon it. I mean, if he works one day, that day before he leaves, before the close up, you pay him. This is like a day laborer, how we see today. 
you know, you go down and kiss me to the to the um in Florida they have a day laboring agency. I think it's called everybody. You you go and you work, and when you finish, you come back to the office and you get paid for that day. So pay him that same day. Or whenever it is agreed upon for him to get paid, because it says uh, because his heart is set on it. And if he cries against you unto me, you know, it will be a sin. You know, when we cry against the Lord, the Lord that, that's a that's a a promise, you know. Remember when you cry to me in Egypt? So if you let that guy cry to me, Lord, I work and he didn't pay me, Lord said, I'm, I'm, I'm coming for you. <laughs> so the Lord takes it serious. So I say the Lord takes that seriously. So we pay um, <clears throat> accordingly. And there are some people, uh, especially in some countries, not only in the United States, but in some countries, <laughs> they wouldn't mind the... Um, the minimum wage stay at one dollar. They, they don't want to see minimum wage increase at all. You know, they just want to keep the person paying, working for low wages, while they reap all the benefits of the of the interest. That's why some countries um, they would prefer if the workers have a share in the in the in the in the business. Anybody remember in the Caribbean, we usually have shares in the in the bank, and whenever the bank make interest, we will get, if you buy shares, we will get a percentage of the share based on what you buy every year. What did they call that? It was a, it was kind of a, like a bond. That profit huh? sharing? Yes, yeah, something sharing. like that. And you'll buy it, and every year you'll get some money in, in the, I remember doing that, get something in the check in the mail every year from the profit of the business. Yes, Karen, you were gonna say something. Well, too, when I think of this too, cause I, in the past, I've worked for family owned businesses. And, um, and I think particularly if you're um, a, a believer, I think when you don't pay people well, I think, I think if you're a believer and you have a business, you should treat your people well and pay them well. And I think I always, this makes me think of this because some of them were really tight fisted and they wouldn't pay their people very well, but they profited off of it. Yes. Yes. And I feel that's holding back and not treating Gary. You've mentioned this before because I seem to have a lot of history of working for family owned business. <laughs> yeah. They say, yeah. they say it's not good. Family and business don't mix. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not my family, but the business is, it's a family business. Uh -huh. and I'm, I'm usually the outsider. I'm not a member of the family. Okay. So, so you know, I, I worked for one where they would hardly, you know, they didn't pay people hardly anything so they could profit from themselves. But I think as Christian, I mean, believers, if we can do it, it's good to, you know, to take care of those people that, 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 would, that would work under them. Yes, that makes sense. Does that make sense? Of, to you? Well, of course, sense you, you can't you can't outgive God. So if you're paying someone fairly and treating them fairly instead of being tight fisted and trying to uh, increase your bottom line, well, God's going to bless you more. Oh yes, and and surprisingly, you know that they, they don't know. But for me, I know if if I'm getting good pay, I I treat the, I treat the company good. Yes, you're getting it. It's gonna, yes. yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, it's a domino effect. Yes, <clears throat> I've just watched that happen for the, the what the person I contract for they didn't treat him very well, and the Lord brought, came along and, and just gave him a wonderful job and left him. You know, you can't, yes, if you bless them, usually, usually when the person is gone, that's when they're gonna realize what they had. Yes, yeah. yes. Some of the time, those businesses fail in the long run. Yes. In the long run, yes. It may take a while, and they get up in bankruptcy. We see many companies now going up in bankruptcies, and they have been around for a long time. You know, it could be because of their practices over the years. Pay back. Yes. Yeah, remember those laws of sowing and reaping. Um, yes. The Father's laws never, ever go away, and they never fail. And um, keeping in mind, too, that tightly closed fist that's trying to hold on to anything, Lose it, it can't receive anything either when it's tightly closed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Now, I, I was talking to my wife the other day and uh, just, just reflecting, you know, and say, um, I kind of understand those people who fight for animal rights. I understand them a little bit. Um, even though it's okay to eat animals, you know, but sometimes we treat them as all people treat the indigenous people. We see them as lesser than normal, and we treat them bad. So here in Deuteronomy 25, the, 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 um, Yah realized that, and he, and he even talks about the, the animals. He says, this is not a law. Verse 4, you shall not muzzle the ox when he treaded out the corn. That's what Karen was talking about, the bottom line. So while the animal is working, you don't want him to eat while he's working in the field because you want to get your profit. So they will muzzle the ox, put, put something over his mouth so he's going to eat while he's working. And, and the Bible says that's wrong. You should let them eat while they're working in the field. You know, back in those days when the animals was grazing the land and they would eat whatever is there also. Yeah, they should eat also or else even the animals I take care of. I never noticed before. I like that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Thou shalt not muzzle the ox or any animal who is working you have him work in the field, you should let him eat. And it, it really, it makes, it makes so much sense because the bottom line is when you, take, when you take good care of your animals or when you take good care of your people, your staff, what have you, you're going to reap the benefits of that. When you treat them ill, um, you know, you shorten their life, which means it's going to cost you more because now you have to replace them more frequently, which yes. is a higher cost you're not gonna get the same production out of them mm -hmm. when you don't treat them properly. Because you know everybody knows that a, uh, an employee that is happy and grateful to be where he is, that his productivity is gonna be a whole lot more than the employee that's grumbling and murmuring and complaining. And you know, every time you go out the door, you come in the door, he's out there smoking a cigarette and murmuring and complaining. And when he's at his desk, it's murmuring and complaining and sowing seeds of discord within the business. Mm -hmm. So it makes so much sense that, you know, if you sow, you know, peace and righteousness and you, you sow compassion and you sow integrity into an organization, whether it's your farm with your animals um, that are that are helping you on the farm or your business your employees what have you that you're gonna reap the benefits of either seed whichever way you go on it and, and surprisingly or maybe we don't realize you know the animals are very smart you know they, they know you don't want to feed them so they're not gonna put out the effort either mm -hmm. it works That's animal amazing. will work slow and you keep beating him to move but you say oh you're not you're not letting me eat so I'm not doing no work mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, you, if you watch them carefully, they are like they are. They are very smart out there. Yeah. More. Um, yes. Chapter eleven of Proverbs, verse twenty-three to twenty-five. Proverbs. Eleven. Eleven. Twenty-three through twenty-five. And then we come back. Proverbs eleven twenty-three to twenty-five. Okay. The desire of the righteous is only good. But the expectation of the wicked is wrong. There is that scattered and yet increase it. And there is that withhold it more than its meat, but it but tender to poverty. Poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watered shall be watered also himself. Yes. So exactly. the one that, that scatters increases more. Yeah, I mean it's like the, the more he gives, the more he gets. The one that withholds, that's the one that ends up in poverty. It's in, it's in verse 26. Read 26. He that will hold the corn, the people shall curse him, but blessings shall be upon the head of him that sell it. Right. Yeah, like, it like I said, that tightly held fist, nothing uh -huh. can get yes. in. So that, that's the law of uh, the principle of the Torah. And so we have, we have many more we could look at in the Tanakh, but we're going to go now to the New Testament, and then we're going to close with Yeshua's words. So let's go to James is a familiar guy who talks about the widow and the poor. So let's do, um, let's do James 1, 27 first. 
and then we do James 2. And the same vein from the Torah. So we know that the, everything in the New Testament is coming from the Torah. They, didn't, they did not invent anything new. So let's do James is a guy who talks a lot about the poor. So let's do verse 27. Okay, so after he's talking about all the things that people do, he says, pure religion and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So he says a true religion is to visit the fatherless and the widow in their affliction and to look for them. And then we have James 2. All right, so James 2 giving us something now. Starting from verse 1. Can someone read that? James 2, James 2, 1 to 4. My brethren. Oh, 1 to 3. My brethren, have not the faith of our servant Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord of glory, where we respect of persons. For, this, for, they, for if there comes unto your assembly a man with a gold ring, a goodly apparel, and then they come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect to him that wears the gay clothing, and say unto him, sit you here in a good place, and say to the poor, you stand there, or sit under my footstool. Yes, we see that many times in, in society, where, where we treat the, and, and sometimes karma will come back to haunt you too, you know, because sometimes, uh, even even in a crime setting, so to speak, the, the, the person who dressed a certain way, you uh, stereotype him, and he's not really the the the, the, um, the the thief or the killer. It's the one who dressed up in his jacket and tie is the one who is going to scam you. <laughs> because they know the human mind that they look upon the certain clothing as respect, you know, so the, so the trickster comes looking the same way. Mm -hmm. And the man who comes in a certain clothing, he's going to really assume that, oh, he's a, he's a thief. <laughs> or pedophile. Pedophile, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, come, they come dressed in the part that you expect um, to, to respect. So he says, do not show any respect of person. The poor and the rich you should treat alike. I you know the rich guy is not going to like it because if he sees you treat him the, the, um, the common person, let's use that term, as same as him, He's gonna be upset, you know, because uh, he doesn't he doesn't see the person as better than himself. That's the key. He sees the he sees himself better than the person. So, what is he doing here? Why are you treating me like him? I should be treated better. So the Lord is saying, no, everyone should be treated better. So that's the laws in the New Testament, and we come over in the New Testament and see the same thing: laws from the Tanakh, and that these laws are still binding. So let's look at Luke 14 now, you know what Yeshua says. We know what he says, but we're going to look at it again. Luke 14, just as a reminder. Uh, sometimes we need reminders. Luke 14, and we're going to do 12 to 14. Can someone read that? No, this one is hard. This one is hard to do too. Then, he, then said he also to him that bade him, when you make a dinner or a supper, call not your friends, nor your brethren, nor your kinsmen, nor your rich neighbors, lest they also bid you again, and a recompense be made to you. But when you make a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you shall be blessed, for they cannot recompense you. For you shall be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Right. So most times we don't, we shouldn't do things because we can get, get back something from the person. We, we do it purely out of love. We don't care if the person can give it back to you or not. Sorry. Do you know that people sometimes go the extreme? My, my friend who is an Adventist, 
her husband is uh, an elder. And so whenever they have visiting pastors come in, in to, to, to preach at their service, they will have the person come to lunch yes. at the service. But sometimes they're not able to do it. And so she asked another elder if when they're not able to do it, if he and his wife, if they could have the minister over. And the man said, no, they only invite the poor okay. <laughs> over to their, sir, to their home for, they flat out refused to have the minister at their house because they only invite people who are not able to provide for themselves. That is so taking it make, to the extreme. He's making an assumption that because the person is a pastor, he can he's not poor. Right, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. That's a big assumption there. <laughs> but, then, but then if he if that pastor leaves somewhere else and if that pastor leave from another city or something and come to your city, come to, to, to serve at your congregation, should he go find somewhere to, to, to dine or should somebody from the congregation take him in? Right. Yeah, that, that, that's their position. Let somebody else do that. They are only going to have people over to their house who are poor or you know they oh, they can't oh. afford to go home for lunch or whatever the reason oh. is oh okay but you know they just re they they didn't do it or, or he might be thinking you know or he could be thinking i'm gonna have so much poor people over here the pastor um uh he doesn't think the pastor may appreciate it i don't know oh, no. I? <laughs> <laughs> in his mind he's doing a ministry <laughs> yeah you know, but sometimes we go. Yes, sometimes, yes. You can extreme. be flexible. You can be flexible in certain circumstances because it's not every time they ask that for that. For that um... can, can I give another example? Sorry, Sasha, before you yes. go. <laughs> Let me tell you how extreme I was at one point. I'm so ashamed of myself. And please, <laughs> nobody repeat this story to anybody else, okay? All right. <laughs> <It's I've... it. laughs> we we promise. Repeat it too. <laughs> at one point. <laughs> We when we're living in Georgia, somebody asked me for a ride home from church, from service. And I said, I don't have enough gas to take you home. And so the person said, I'll give you money to go to the gas station to put gas. I said, I don't buy gas on Sabbath. You have to find somebody else to take you home. Uh-huh. Right. And I see I, I see what you mean. Did not take that person home. Mm -hmm. And when I got home and realized what I did, I was so ashamed of myself. That is taking it to the extreme. Yes, yes. When he says, you know, prepare, because what I normally do is put gas in the van before Sabbath. So I, I don't have to go and spend money on Sabbath. So my good deed of taking the person home was totally canceled out by I don't spend money on the Sabbath. Right, right. <laughs> yes, there are some people who do take things to extreme. They're not, they're not flexible in, 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 you know, was, in doing I that, was, which is good. But, it, but it's good that you realize, <laughs> it's good that you realize something was wrong, right? <laughs> Yeah, this ties into what we had earlier said. It's just that when you guys were mentioning your experiences, it, I just remember this one um, a little late in the study, but I'll say it anyway. I was in the Philippines um, visiting with my wife and her family, and um, the Seventh-day Adventist pastor came to spend time with me. And when he came and we we're going to have our discussion, he brought his laptop and when as he attempted to turn it on, it would not work. And so he, you know, it was disappointing because what he had to show me was inside the laptop. Unbeknownst to me, I could see my mother-in-law upset and some other brethren upset, but I didn't know anything. 
um, towards the end, I feel compassion. I say, listen, leave the laptop here. I'll get it fixed for you. And if I can get it fixed, we, 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 we'll, we'll do something for you. We'll do something. At which point my mother-in-law wanted to like throw a pan at me or something, you know, and, <laughs> and I'm looking at my face and I'm saying, and, I, and, and I'm saying, you know, the, you know, the, these Filipinos are very selfish and stingy people here, you know, it's my money. I, you know, I'm going to do this, you know, I mean, what is it to them? Anyway, when he left, they all come, oh, on, on top of me. Now, I really want to say, wait, before you say anything, I want you to know my position. And I defend in my heart, give himself, you know, how generous I am and so forth. And he said, we agree, we agree, we agree. I said, well, since you agree, what's the problem? He said, that laptop didn't break now. <laughs> that laptop has been broken for weeks. He knows it doesn't work. And he brought it here so he can put it to you like it's not working. He meant to share something. He couldn't share anything. It's been oh, weeks no. since that's not been working. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It, go, it goes back to the issue of malice. Yes. That's what I say, in the absence of malice, we have to show compassion and be helpful, but in the absence of malice. Yes. Uh, he did that on purpose. He was yes. going to come and see a foreigner. And everybody over there thought, you know, that I was in the, you know, wealthy side of the spectrum, <laughs> including my wife. You know? <laughs> oh boy, they, they, they had a reality check coming to them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my wife was speaking to all her friends of the mansions she's gonna have. She's gonna be driving three cars. <laughs> she's gonna have a chauffeur, cook, a masseuse, uh, you know. <laughs> and uh, from the US of A's, a she's gonna live in America. Okay, and it turns out, of course, the is a small little island, 13 miles long. <laughs> it's, it was a third world country. <laughs> you don't consider St. Thomas American. <laughs> but anyway, I, it, it just your story about what happened. Um, but yes, taking things into extreme. That's what the Messiah meant. He, he said, you know, you're supposed to honor the Sabbath, but which one of you will see your donkey fall in a yes. ditch on a Sabbath yes. day and not take him out? Yes. You know, yes. Uh, yes. common sense will tell you, if you leave it there, he will die. So mm -hmm. you, you don't do that. But yet those people who were saved, the donkey were criticizing him for healing a man on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. There's like David said, I'm for peace, but when I open my mouth, they are for war. Mm. Yes. Right. So we have to have, I always use the term, we must be wise as a serpent yeah. and harmless as a dog. You know, we must be smart. Yes. All right. So we continue. I have two more scriptures here. Um, First John 3, 17 and 18, in same line with, so we see, we are seeing now where the Torah, the, the New Testament lines up with the Torah. We test the New Testament by the Torah, not the other way around. Um, first Corinthians, First John 3, uh, 17 and 18. And whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of Yahweh in him? <clears throat> My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Amen. Right. Must be in action also. Yep. Same thing. Same thing, same thing in, the, in, in marriages, by, by action. Yes. Even though some ladies still want to hear it, Brother Sutter, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even, even though we do everything, we, 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 we provide, uh, we bring the food in, and uh, I, I know Irish and Sanjay are still saying, you need to say it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, average man, we, we are very logically thinking. We we figure that actions speak louder than words. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we have to keep in mind that words are spirit forces that need to be released in the atmosphere around us. Good on Linda. Because of their power, one should not be as liberal with the is forces. You don't play with forces, you don't understand. 
Did a woman want to be under, under, Go ahead. How can I try? I said, you tell a woman one too many times that you love her, and how can I try that things begin to happen? <laughs> <laughs> Why is Irish looking so guilty? Tendency to abuse the power of the spiritual world. <laughs> The same way we have to keep telling our kids that you love them. You, I love you, I love you. The same way you have to do with us women. You have to, you have to keep saying it. Uh, Karen, what do you think about that? Yes, remember, remember also too, the Father tells us that faith comes by hearing, so we need to hear it again and again and again. And again. Yes. And again. Yeah, but why does it doesn't work the other way around? Why are you going around saying, oh, you're so handsome every day. I love you, hon. You're beautiful. And your beard excites me. We never have a hair. We didn't, we didn't say that it's, it shouldn't go the other way, too. We're just asking for our side. <laughs> oh, she's being like the, the daughter of the Olafon. She's just asking for her side. <laughs> what was Karen saying? I told you when we called it, what you? That was like 11 years ago. You know, I did tell you then. Oh, you told her once and that was good? <laughs> <laughs> I got a really what good one. What what if what if she showed you once with her actions? You know, <laughs> fixed you a beautiful meal and says, Well, I fixed you a beautiful meal fifteen years ago. Isn't that enough? You're on your own now, buddy. <laughs> Yeah. Right. So we should do it by actions. That's right. Actions and everything to our neighbors and everybody. Right. Your neighbors can be your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. They remember, right. your spouse can also become a hostile neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I just remember to look in the mirror. <laughs> just remember to look in. Yes. Yes. All right. So my last scripture, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean we're finished. We can continue the discussion about the last scripture I have. Somebody can come up with some more. Is now very serious words from the Messiah. Matthew 25, 31 to 36. Matthew 25, 31 to 36. Okay, who's going to read that one? Oh, where are we at? By the 25, 31 to 36. I think, um, you know what? Yeah, basically it's just 34, 34 to 36. Then shall the king say unto them, on his right hand, come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and he gave me meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me drink. I was a stranger, and he took me in. Naked, and he clothed me. I was sick, and he visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. Oh, my, my mistake. Continue reading. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my bedroom, ye have done it unto me. Then shall ye say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, unto everlasting fire, 
prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was an angered, and he gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and he took me not in. Naked, and he clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and he visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto thee, inasmuch as he did it not to one of the least of these, he did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. Right. There's a song that goes that says, um, I think I mentioned it before, but nobody didn't know it. In, in, um, in your eyes. Mm. It says, the song says, in your eyes. So we see, we see people as how Yeshua would see them. And we see them as all we see them. We see ourselves, and then we will treat everybody better. Amen. You know, this this week, mm -hmm. this week I think it was um, Wednesday. No, no Tuesday. I was I would say I was faced with something similar. On Wednesday, I went to work, and this young woman, she was just forty-two. She tried to kill herself. At the hospital? So, yeah, yeah, that's what brought her in. Oh, okay. So when I talked with her, and I said, why would you want to do that? And he said, because I'm hopeless. She said, I, I become homeless two weeks. I was raped out on the street. And... You know, her feet was bruised. And she said, by walking two weeks from place to place, and my foot get bruised. And he said, that's why I tried. And I tried to talk to her, you know. And I told her, I said, listen, there is still hope. While there's life, there's still hope. And even though you can't see God, but he sees you. And you know, there was a part of me there that said, oh God, I know that I have space. I have space in the house. But then there's another part that said, you don't know her. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what could happen. Right, right. So I did, the only thing I could do before they, they had a shift get on you know, she was sleeping and I woke her up and I gave her the money I had on me. I said, listen, I don't know what this can do, but do something for, for yourself with it. Because I really felt sorry. I really felt so sorry for her. But that's the only thing I could do. Right, right. The Lord see your hearts and know what we can do. I know that in the time that we are living in, you're right. Sometimes we don't trust, we don't know who is who, you know? Yeah. So we do the best we can. And you gave her some money. So whatever she does with that, that's going to be on her now to make life better for herself and come out of a city. Yeah, I know it's tough out there, especially for ladies. Yeah. Especially ladies, you know? They don't have any body, so they go out and she, she end up doing end up become prostitute because she has to eat, you know. And so, what can we do? It's, it's a tough world out there. But then you look and you say, "Boy, this is America," you know. And other oh. people there somewhere clamor want to come to America. Yeah. Yes, that's true. And and we and we boast that we are the richest country in the world. Which is not true anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, also too, what, what we're not what we're not always aware of 
on this, looking at it from this side, is we're not necessarily aware of how this country is sold to other people abroad. And so they have an impression of, of this as being somewhat of a utopia per se, mm -hmm. because they don't see the hood. They don't see the ghetto. They never get to see all, any of that. All, all they get to see is the, the good side of the resort, the beautiful side. They don't see the back side where the, the trash cans are, you know, and where the laundry facilities are. They just see the, the, the good side. And I'm sharing this from the perspective of having talked to people who've come from outside and come in, sharing, this is what we thought, this is what we expected. And then when we came here, and we find that you have stuff here that looks just like where we lived and where we came from. <laughs> that, you know, the, the whole facade is somewhat, the reality of it comes as a crushing blow to them. Um, and so, you know, yeah, we, we, it's sold that this is the land of opportunity, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, we, we all know that, you know, there are, there are costs associated with everything. Yes. And uh, we know that because this, this society is so capitalist driven that um, it's, it's challenging. It's, it's challenging to come from outside with nothing and having no support to be able to actually get anywhere yes. by yourself. Right. That is true. And sometimes we have to be in, maybe in this position or come from a similar situation to understand uh, the other person. Right. And mm -hmm. um, to, to also piggyback on what Vaselda was sharing, Vaselda, I, I can understand your heart and I can understand um, some of the pain that you're going through because I've, I've been in similar situations as she's talking about where people, the father puts people in your path that have legitimate need and your, your heart is to, to reach out and, and especially also for us as ladies, that mothering instinct, you mm -hmm. know, to nurture and to help. But then because of everything going on in our society, there also is that wisdom that you don't know what all comes with this package. You know, it's, it's, it's unknown to you and you have a family at home with mm -hmm. small children that are gonna be affected and impacted by this. So some of the things that, um, that I have done, um, and this is something that perhaps we can all do because at one point or another, we're probably all going to be faced with situations like this, is get some information and look for resources. Mm -hmm. we can you can provide, recommend, make recommendations. Yeah. Right. We can provide to these people, um, you know, resources for, uh, for shelter or for, for food, um, places for clothing. Um, you know, the ministry that we were in previously together, they had become a part of an, an outreach where they provided clothing to the homeless community. Shoes was a part of that. You know, many of us donated to some of that. So maybe um, as a group, us putting together some, some information on contacts where we can say, hey, listen, um, here are some places that we know about where help is possibly available that you can go. Um, you know, there was a place where a friend of mine took me um, it was a, a working shelter for people who were homeless. And, uh, you know, so places like that, that are, you know, in our communities and stuff. So. Yes, yes. So I think, I think as, as, as a group, perhaps maybe we can all begin to contribute to that and that we can, you know, share that and have that available somewhere to each other, um, maybe a part of the website or something, I don't know. Um, so that that's information that we can access that when we come across a situation and we probably, all of us probably are going to at some point or another in the near future, not too near future. Yes. Um, we can have those things available to help. Right. 
There are many places out there and most people are not aware of it. Right. There are places out there that will help you pay your light bill, water bill, you know? Right, I just found out about that. Yes, yes, they, 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 uh, most of them are Catholic charities too. They, they, they have those stuff there, yeah. We, we had a friend who used to come to the congregation um, as a young lady. She, she, she didn't have any abiding place. That's why we don't see her sometimes. You know? I think, Sandra, did you recommend something to her to get place? I well, don't yeah. think so, no. Yeah. But she's all yeah, over the place. Yeah, there's a place, there's a place uh -huh. up here in Orlando there there i think there are two of them and um but they 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 do a beautiful work because it's for play it's a place for people mm -hmm. that they get caught in the situation where they find themselves pretty much homeless right but what they help do is um it's a working situation they have to work okay right they provide they provide all of the meals for them uh, they provide uh, tutoring for the kids when they come in in the afternoons. They have separate facilities for people that are single and units for, for families, people that have kids. They, um, they actually take them through an entire training program and they also, have, they also have programs to help them train to get skills to move, move themselves up in the job force. Right, right, right. Not only thing, give, give them the yeah. fish, but... Exactly. Fish. One of yes. the things that this, this one group does that I think is amazing is they teach them about finances. They force them to save and they can stay, I think up, up to about two years, they can stay in the facility and it's a beautiful facility. This they place, should be, they should this, this get place, themselves together in two years. Exactly. This place is not a dump, but their, their concept is we want to help you so that you don't end up having to have a need to come back here again. Uh -huh. Right. So when you leave here, we want you to be on your feet solid, knowing how to save, having skills to be able to get a decent job where you can take care of yourself, having the wherewithal to understand how to handle your finances, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, how to set aside and save money. So, um, you know, these are things that are resources that, that I think that, we should probably put together um, also too, you know, with the situation, many of you know the situation I've been in the last couple of years, and I am so grateful to you guys, my family members that have been helping me the last couple of years. Um, one of the things I've learned more recently is actually how to access the system of food banks that's available yes. to us. Um, that was something that was foreign to me. I didn't know how to do that or how to use that, but I've been able to actually tap into that resource and been able to use that to reduce um, what I'm spending on groceries so that, you know, the little bit of money that I do have, you know, can go a little bit further than it has been in the past. So again, that's another resource. So oh, yes, there are plenty out there, plenty. We just need to know it. Right, you know, yes. and, and also, you know, you know, you know, showing how to how to use the system because I, you know, I wasn't eligible, quote unquote, for what is it called the um, financial assistance because of my situation. So, um, you know, I had to look at, you know, other avenues and other routes to be able to make ends meet and make things happen for my daughter and I. Oh, because well, you didn't, you don't have no taxes filed? Well, also, too, because I was still married. Oh, okay. You know, so um, that those kind of a big wrench wrench into things. So, so yeah, I, I think that that would be something that um, we probably should sit down and, you know, put some and most together. And most of those places are non-profit. Can you believe that? Right. They do it without profits. They get any profit. They're so um, donations from other folks. And those same people who they help, the same one come back and give donation because they appreciate what was done for them. Exactly. So that's, that's, what, that's what happens, yes. Exactly. True. All right. So we thank the Lord for his words. Brother Morey, Brother Soto, you want to say something? 
Yeah, I, 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 Sister Vaselda, um, that experience that you had with this young lady, I, I just want to make a quick comment to that. Um, uh, I, I, I always remind myself that the Most High does not need my permission to hear someone, mm -hmm. to help someone. It does not need my permission. Right. And so, yes. and so I, I've come to believe that many a times Elohim is answering a prayer and we are used at the vehicle. Yeah. And uh, we may not realize it. <clears throat> Back in September, and I'll try not to do this very fast and without hopefully mm -hmm. getting emotional about it. Back in <laughs> September of 2000, I ended up in Puerto Rico because I had a, a gallbladder attack. I had a huge storm there, and they decided that it was going to take me down. Mm -hmm. um, it was an awful weekend. I uh, passed, survived the weekend in St. Thomas, drove, uh, flew to Puerto Rico. And this, by then, I no longer have pain, but I still have an issue. And um, I, I was being taken through the emergency room. And I was made to wait a moment, and I saw somebody, a, a gentleman who I did not know, a, a Catholic priest had approached him to offer to pray for him, and he said no, that he, he's Protestant, he's not Catholic. And the priest just walked away. So I approached him and decided to talk to him and ask him how he was feeling, how he was doing, and we just started a conversation. Um, I was there with him for about half an hour. He had all kind of tubes. He is fighting for his life because he has a pulmonary embolism, which is a blood clot in his lung. Mm -hmm. He had a blood clot in his lung. He has his a lung. pulmonary embolism. I never knew what a pulmonary mm -hmm. embolism was. I didn't know what that term was, but I learned that day. In fact, in this trip, I will really learn what a pulmonary embolism is all about. Mm -hmm. The thing is that when I was leaving, he um, got into an attack and he couldn't breathe. So I called for the nurse and they came there. And after a while, some doctors came and they closed and sipped the place down. And I stood there and then I sat down. I kept watching and I decided to pray for the guy because they were saying they're going to have to cut him. And, you know, they, when they cut that in the throat and they put that pipe and the nurse that first day did, did it wrong. And this, there's no anesthesia for this. They're trying to save your life. They don't have time to numb you. Right. So the doctor comes screaming at the nurse and then goes on the other side to cut and put the two and, and get him breathing and so forth. And so when they came for me, I told, I, they, they, showed me, they showed me the room. I, I came back again after I knew where I'm going to be and so forth. I, I came back again. And now the you emergency know, staff is gone. He's laying there. He's, he's obviously completely unconscious. And I had $2,000 with me, cash money. I had plenty of room in my credit cards. I figured I don't need this cash money. I put it in an envelope. Because I was, I was walking with my attached case and I had all my stuff there and I sealed it and I gave it to him. I placed it right in a, under him that he could be seen. I knew his wife was, would be coming because he had mentioned her. I figured she would find it. And I went. Right. Two days later, I was having my surgery. A simple, simple procedure. Right. Remove the stone. Topic, removal of my gallbladder. Yeah, right. yes, remove the gallbladder. They did laparoscopy. They, they do two, three little holes. Right. And your abdomen, bring in the instruments and just take it out. Would you believe I almost died? Not only did I almost die, you know what almost killed me? A pulmonary embolism. <laughs> the very thing. The very thing. Uh -huh. I, may, I survived that by the grace of Elohim. I survived that. I remember not being able to move. I couldn't, I, I couldn't even take my body weight. They gave me this little this thing with a instrument with three balls, three little light plastic balls. I have to blow in it. And the first time I'm trying to blow, I can't get even the first ball. There's three balls I'm supposed to bring up. I couldn't get anything to move. My oxygen level was around 11%. So that kind of lets you know where I was. My veins were so dark, you could see them right through my, my skin everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, I survived that. About a month and a half or two months later, I get a letter from the hospital. The individual had made it to the hospital. He found out who I was. The hospital was able to identify me, but would not give him my information. So he begged them to mail this personal letter to me, which I received. He survived because he needed a procedure done. They needed to implant something in him, and it cost exactly $2,000. Wow. wow. 
So right. I, I, I told my sister, you don't know, but sometimes what we will call compassion is the leading of the Ruach uh, moving us because Elohim is trying to answer that person's need, their yes. prayer. And you just the instrument. You're just the instrument. Right. And maybe that money yeah. she gave her, that's what she needed, that exact amount. Well, yeah. you just, you from the beginning of your statement, Brother Soto, you just confirm it. <laughs> because Tuesday is not a day that I work. Okay? Mm -hmm. I don't work on Tuesdays. But somehow my supervisor texts me on Tuesday and asks, could you come in tonight? Mm -hmm. And I went. And the person who I ministered to, this, the same lady, in the morning, just as I was about to leave, because I talked to her through the night, I counseled her, I tell her about the Lord. In the morning, within my spirit, the Holy Father said, Tonight is not the night. Yeah, I'm, you don't work Tuesdays. But this was the reason I brought you in to minister. Right. So mm -hmm. this was you just, just a confirmation. Right, that was yeah. the reason why I want you to go. Yeah. yeah. You are the only one who will obey me. The others will disobey, so I want you there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how the Lord works, and we have that. A wonderful discussion and every, every Shabbat. This one was good. All right, so that's good. So we hope we all had a wonderful learning experience today and we learn something and we get closer to the Father and we have a wonderful week coming up. Yeah. Okay, and we are now getting ready to see what we can do for the kids in going back to school, how they're going to do it yeah. and so forth. So we will be working on that. All parents will be working on that and grandparents, I know. All right, so we'll do the Aaronic benediction and we can continue talking. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir.